Hey, good morning everybody. So this time of year, every morning, we have to come over to our, our feedlot and feed our calves. So our feedlot is strictly a backgrounding feedlot. Um, it's not a finishing lot. We have a, a target rate of gain that we're feeding these calves. Um, we're shooting for about a pound and a quarter a day is how much we want them to gain a day. Um, and then we want them to be about 850 pounds mid-May. So those are our target weights and our target rate of gain. Um, the goal of this backgrounding <coughs> feedlot is really not to, you know, deposit a lot of fat onto these animals yet. We're really shooting for muscle development and kind of growing the, the skeletal frame of these animals. Um, that just gives us the opportunity to kind of maximize our carcass weight when these animals get to, you know, butcher time and finished weight. So just right now focusing on those traits rather than um, putting down a lot of fat on these animals. So I'm gonna get the tractor started up and get the feed mixed up in the feeder wagon and um, get these calves fed. To get started, I'm going to turn on this thing here. Hello, good morning. And this is just our scale that's in the in our feeder wagon. And to get the feeder wagon going, I got to turn the PTO on. So that's just this switch here. You pull it up and over, and you can see the PTO starts starts turning. So that'll get the augers going and get the mixer wagon ready. There you can see the augers and the mixer wagon. This is just how all the feed gets mixed up in here, how the bales get ground up. Um, they're pretty tough, so they can handle a lot. We've got our John Deere 7600 hooked up to our mixer wagon. That's what we use for that. And then we've got our 6715 John Deere tractor that we use to load the mixer wagon. So with our target rate of gain of about a pound and a quarter a day, we're feeding our calves roughly 2.2 to 2.3% of their body weight. So these calves probably weigh about 700 pounds-ish. So we're, we're looking to feed them about 15 pounds a day to get them to gain a pound and a quarter. So right now we're giving them a mix of alfalfa hay, <clears throat> corn silage, and corn. We'll also be giving them some distiller's grain, uh, which is a byproduct of corn ethanol, but we haven't been able to get that shipped to us yet, so we will be giving that in the future. And then we're also mixing in a vitamin mineral supplementation pack um, just to cover those needs of the animals as well. So it's very important that I cut this net wrap off of the bale before I put it into the mixer wagon. Otherwise the net wrap gets all caught up in those augers and it'll just ruin everything, get everything all clogged up. And Throw this bale in the mixer wagon. And we'll get it all 
ground up. So this bale is going to take about 10 minutes to get all ground up. And then after it's ground up quite a ways, I'll, I'll add this other bale. I don't want to add both of them at the same time. The thing will just, the mixer wagon will just get clogged up and it won't be able to ground them up well enough. So I mentioned the mixer wagon had a scale in it. So you can see this bale weighed about 1,200 pounds. Um, it's just the one bale in there. And after I add the next one, we should be about at 2,400 pounds. And that'll put us right at our our target amount of forage feed for these calves. So these calves are going to be continuing to grow and um, just as they're growing they're going to be requiring more feed so we'll be increasing what we feed them all the time um, and then once we get to mid-May when they've reached their target weight we're going to turn them out onto grass and that's really where we can you know most effectively and efficiently put on some start depositing some fat onto these animals and actually put on a lot more muscle as well um, and then probably into July we usually send our steers down to a finishing feedlot in Nebraska and they'll finish them for us. Um, and then we'll be sending our cull heifers down there as well, but we will keep our replacement heifers. We'll keep them on grass all summer long and then they'll get bred and um, we'll keep them to replace the old cows in our herd. And as that's how we usually do things, um, this year has been far from normal. We're in a really bad drought year. So we actually sent all of our steer calves early down to that feedlot in Nebraska and they're gonna be backgrounding them for us. And then we'll either bring them back and put them on grass for a while or we'll just keep them down there to have them finished um, in that feedlot. So here at our backgrounding feedlot, we kept all of our heifers and we also kept some of the smaller steers, uh, not very many, just the ones that we didn't feel like were ready to go down to the feedlot in Nebraska. We sent our steers down there early because we, didn't, we weren't able to produce enough feed up here ourselves to feed our cows and our calves throughout the winter. So it made sense to send our calves down to the feedlot in Nebraska where they can back on them for us for you know, a lot cheaper. They have the feed readily available to them. Um, and it would, it would cost a lot for us to freight the feed in from somewhere, say East River, South Dakota, or Nebraska, or North Dakota, to where we are in Western South Dakota. Um, so it just makes sense for us to send our cattle somewhere where the feed is cheaper than to spend a bunch of money to get the feed freighted to us and spend a lot. <clears throat> Next I'll be throwing in some corn silage, which looks like this. The alfalfa hay is more our high protein feed and then this corn silage is more a high energy feed and finally our the corn we'll be feeding is high energy as well. And then once we have our distiller's grain that's more of a high protein feed um, so we'll have those we'll have that all covered and then with our supplementation of minerals and vitamins these caps should be covered. I put in about 1,200 pounds of silage and now I'm going to put in about 1,000 pounds of corn. So the corn we're feeding is ear corn. Uh, we were actually able to get this from a neighbor just about a mile down the road. And we recognize that this form of corn isn't necessarily the most palatable or the, or the most digestible for the calves, but you know, it's what we had around, it's what we had close, so we're going to utilize it the best we can and we're pretty thankful to have our neighbor just a mile away and um, just with this year being a drought it was such a blessing to have this corn so close we didn't have to pay an immense amount of freight um, but our cattle actually really like this ear corn as feed um, they utilize it pretty well and make use of it they'll eat the whole thing right up so so they get the use out of it um, and it works just fine for us got about 10 minutes I'm gonna let that feed get all mixed up perfectly but uh you know, I don't want to waste that corn so 
I gotta get it in the mixer wagon. Think I can make it? I was six for eight on completions there, so that's not that bad. All right, it's looking like it's getting mixed pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and start fading this out. So first I'm gonna push this lever forward and that's gonna open this door. So that just gets the feed coming out. And then this lever runs this little conveyor belt that puts the feed into the bunk. So I'll just go along slowly. four pens of calves and based on how many number of head we have in each pen is how much feed I'm going to give them so I'm constantly watching the scale that we have in the tractor it's showing me how much feed I'm putting out into the bunks so so I've got I keep track of you know how much feed I'm giving each each calf and each pen just based on how many head we have. a lot of hay during the summer and we also have enough pasture ground that really lets us utilize this backgrounding lot and um, incorporate it into our operation um, so we feel pretty blessed to be able to have this and and have been really excited about implementing it um, another reason why we use this backgrounding lot is it it gives us a opportunity to market our cattle better um, the cattle market is really up and down with prices so you you know, there's certain times of the year when prices are good and when prices are bad. So using this backgrounding lot gives us the opportunity to kind of plan when we want to market our cattle and um, try and capitalize on, on good prices certain times of the year. We can, we can work backwards from when we want to sell our cattle and, and feed them accordingly. So it really gives us an opportunity to take advantage of that. Hey, what are you doing? That's not where you're supposed to be. Some of the smaller calves can crawl right through the cables. So we actually have a troublemaker pen way at the end where we put the small calves that tend to like to crawl out. Um, that pen's got an extra line of cable so they can't get out. all the pens of calves but we also have one pen of cows here that are our open cows and our April calving cows um, so I'm gonna go mix about the same weight for these cows um, and feed them really I know well. I'm gonna get this question so I'm just gonna address it what happened to my back window to be honest I have no idea once I moved back from college the window was gone and we haven't got it fixed yet so I'm hoping that we do before it gets too cold Otherwise, it's going to be a little drafty and chilly up in that cab. But uh, yeah, for now, it's fine. But no, no, no back window right now. So I just went and mixed up another mixer wagon full of feed to feed our cows. The cows that we have in here are our open cows and our April calving cows. So when we Craig checked a couple weeks ago, we were able to tell which cows are open and which cows would calve in April. So the open cows, we don't want around. Um, they didn't get bred for some reason and it just doesn't make sense for our operation to be profitable if we don't have cows that are productive. Um, so we're going to fatten them up a little bit and then sell them here probably this week sometime. And then our April calving cows, with our operation we actually try and calf end of February and March. Um, and that's semi-early compared to a lot of operations and the reason we do that is because you know we turn our cows out onto their summer pasture which is in forest service permits those permits are so big some of them are 8,000 17,000 acres so 
We like to have our cows bred before they go on to the Forest Service permits because if they aren't bred, it's going to be really hard for our bulls to travel around those big acreage plots and breed all these cows. So we try and have them all bred in May and June. Um, so to have them calve earlier means they'll be cycling earlier and they'll be able to get bred in May and June rather than during the summer months when they're out on the summer pasture. We don't have bunks for the cows. I'm just gonna put the feed right here on the ground. Um, it's just fine. We usually don't have these cows in here for too long, so it doesn't really matter if it's on the ground. Even though those April calving cows, they don't fit well into our operation, they, they fit perfectly into a, another person's operation. So we're gonna bring them to the sale here when the market's a little better in February and in March. Um, so hopefully those cows can be a blessing to somebody else and they can utilize them and use them um, as a good bred cow. So we're gonna keep them here and, and feed them until then so they can be you know, in good condition for the next person that buys. And finally, this last pen is our little troublemaker pen so these are the little calves that have been crawling out and won't stay in their pen so we bring them down to this last pen that has an extra land the table so I'll give them a little bit of feed too here quick. So we got everything fed for the day. So when it comes to water our calves have water whenever they want. So we have these geothermal water tanks that you know, they go down deep enough to where they don't freeze up in the winter due to the just the heat that comes from the earth. And, um, you know, they might get a little crust on the top from the from the ice, but if cattle are coming in frequently enough to drink, that, that crust usually doesn't get formed. So the cattle have access to water whenever they want it. Um, Yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope it was enjoyable. 